So a couple last problems with integration by parts, uh, a simple one, and then a solve for the integral type problem. So kind of the simple one is this, although it's maybe deceptively simple. I mean, look at that, and gosh, it's hard to get inspired. Hard to look at that and go, oh, hey, I got this. But I actually did hint on what to do for something like this in part one. Go ahead. Yeah, dv equals dx. Now remember, when you're setting things up, your u part has to be something that, when you differentiate it, hopefully it doesn't get a whole lot worse. You have to be able to integrate uh, your dv part. We don't know how to integrate cosine of our cosine of x, but we do know how to differentiate it. So I'll put that constant here with it for arc cosine of x. So dv is just going to be x. And let me help you out here because um, I don't think that the arc cosine, the derivative of that is on the tip of everyone's tongue. So it's going to be minus 4 um, over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Okay, let's see if that does us any good here. So we're going to want u times v minus the integral of v du. Let's write that down just as a little guide. So u times v, I'll write that as 4 times x times our cosine of x. minus the integral of v du. So that's x times minus 4 dx over square root of 1 minus x squared. So minus 4x over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Let's clean this up just a little bit just to make it easier for ourselves. I'll take out the negative 4, which will cancel with that negative. Bless you. Cosine of x plus 4 times the integral of x times the square root of 1 minus x squared dx. Did this process help us out at all? Did integration by parts make this simpler or something we can handle? Kevin, what's what do you see here that we could do? If if I had if I had just a one here, then I could do something like that. But I've got an x there. Somebody, yeah, u substitution. Yeah, good job. So we'll let u equal one minus x squared. Du equals negative two x dx. Since I've got an x dx here, let me solve for that here. That's going to be minus one half du equals x dx. So let's move this down to the next level. 4 arc, 4x four arc cosine of x plus 4 times the integral of negative 1 half uh, du over the square root of u. And again, I feel obliged to kind of clean things up a little bit. Let's take out the 1 half. So that's going to be 4x arc cosine of x minus 2 times the integral of u to the negative 1 half du. So I did a couple things here. I wrote this as u to the 1 half and then moved that up to the numerator, which gave it its negative exponent. 4x arc cosine of x. Let's see. Uh, what else? Uh, minus 2 times u to the positive one half divided by positive one half plus a constant. So kind of taking my time on this last little bit here because it's easy to get tricked up with these coefficients and constants. Dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. So it's 4x our cosine of x minus four times u to the one half but that's just going to be the square root of 1 minus x squared plus your constant.
Okay. That one look okay? So just another reminder that sometimes you want your dv term to equal dx. So, yay. How are we looking on problem 28 there? Good. Thumbs up. All right. So I have some things queued up. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I can find find one other thing here. Um, uh, We still have uh, some sound here for this last one. Uh, still have sound? Yes, we just still have sound. Okay. Uh, last one is going to be, prob well, last one for me, a couple for you, problem 36. I'm going to tilt my paper sideways because I think I might need it. Not sure. Let's see how it goes. Uh, we won't need it at least initially. At some point, you might need a little wider sheet, but here goes. Problem 36 starts out as dy by dx equals e to the negative x over 3 times the sine of 2x. And this passes through, remarkably of all things, the point 0 and negative 18 over 37. So it's a differential equation. In order to solve for y and eventually solve for the constant, um, what I'll do is I'll multiply both sides by dx in this equation. So take both sides of this equation and multiply by dx. On the left side, it cancels. On the right hand side, we get our dx term over there. e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx and that's perfect because that sets us up to integrate so I'll integrate both sides and on the left hand side I get a y and I'll let you work on the right hand side all yours all right just kidding I gotta help you out on this one you might look at this and start saying all right well integration by parts but unlike a lot of our problems, no matter what you pick for u or dv, as you differentiate or you integrate, it's not going to change much, is it? It's just going to kind of cycle through. And when you have something in this form, e to a power times a sine or a cosine, etc., these tend to end up as a solve for the integral part. So what I want you to do is I want you to keep your eye kind of on this original integral because eventually and magically it's going to pop back out. So uh, what we're trying to figure out is what this is equal to. Okay. So we'll do this by integration by parts. Now one of the tricks is that you're going to need to do a couple iterations of integration by parts. It doesn't matter too much what you let u equal and what you let dv equal. But once you pick something for u and dv, you stick with it. So if we start out by saying, all right, u is equal to e to the negative x over 3, and dv is sine of 2x dx, stick with it. Let's make these choices and see what happens. So du is going to be negative one-third e to the negative x over 3. And v is going to be 
negative cosine, negative one half cosine of two x. And there's a dx term here. So let's fill in our typical formula. The integral of v du equals u times v minus, oops, excuse me, u dv equals u times v minus the integral of v du. So it's this part that I need to fill in. u times v is going to be e to the negative x over 3 divided by negative 2 or multiplied by negative 1 half times the cosine of 2x minus the integral of v du. So it's the product of these two. So it's going to be a negative one half times a negative one third is going to be a one sixth e to the negative x over three times cosine of x dx. Cosine of two x dx. Doesn't look like we got very far, does it? Kind of looks pretty similar to what we just had. So what's going to happen from here is we're going to play that game again, except with just this term right here. So OK, let's do that. So a lot of writing here. To integrate this, you have to do integration by parts again. So let me give myself a little space here. Now the one important thing that I said earlier is that whatever you let u equal or dv equal, you have to be consistent. We're going to make those same choices on this next part. So u in this case, let's take the constant with it. It's going to be this part right here, my function with e to the x. So 1 6 e to the negative x over 3. And then dv is your trigonometric function. In this case, cosine of 2x dx. Now we integrate and differentiate. Start with the derivative. That's going to be negative 1 18th e to the negative x over 3. v is going to be 1 half sine of 2x. And I think that's looking good. Now remember, all of this is going to be in the expansion of this. So all we're doing is we're expanding this. So let me carefully write out all that we've got. So it's going to be minus e to the negative x over 3 divided by 2 cosine of 2x minus and let's expand this. I'm going to expand this with a u times v because I'm doing my integration by parts for this term. I still have the negative on the outside. u times v will be 1 12th and then I'll have an e to the negative x over 3 in the numerator. 1 12th sine of 2x. Minus, so that's my u times v, minus the integral of v du. So a 1 half times a negative 1 18th is going to be a negative 1 32nd, or 1 36th, I should say e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx. Now, you're probably good enough 
to clean this up in one step. Maybe I'm going to take two steps to clean it up. That's okay. So it's going to be minus e to the negative x over 3 over 2 cosine of 2x minus, and I still keep this in the parentheses for one more line, e to the negative x over 3 over 12 sine of 2x plus the integral of, no, I want to factor that sucker out. Um, I'm going to take that 136 out. 136 times the integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx. Um, no. Fortunately, this is where it's all going to stop. If you look at this real carefully, you should see that it looks a little bit familiar. Right here and right here, those two are the same. Now, you might be like, oh, God, great, we're just spinning our wheels, but we're not. It's actually a good thing that we see the exact same integrand appearing again. So let me write it all out, starting with this term right here. And this is where you're probably going to need, you know, a little bit wider sheet. Um, let's see. So, so what we've concluded so far is this. The integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx equals... All this, now let me distribute the negative sign in here as well. So it's going to be minus e to the negative x over 3 divided by 2 cosine of 2x minus negative e to the x over 3 over 12 sine of 2x minus 136 the integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx. So, wow. So here's where the magic happens. And it's pretty cool how this thing finishes up. So... You up with me in terms of your writing on this one. I don't want to... How do you get to this step? Like, I was following the other Well, um, remember, this, this started out when we're integrating this. So we're integrating this, and we did a lot of work, and we got all this. So really what it's saying is that this equals this. So that's all I did is I, I reminded us where we started was with this right here. And we've got this on the right-hand side. So that's it's just a reminder of where we've been and where we're at. Should be a... Um, I think I distributed that right because we have a negative here. Negative outside the parentheses distributes itself to both of them. So I appreciate you checking me, but I'm pretty sure that that's a negative there. Okay? So Slav's like, what do you mean? Pretty sure? <laughs> All right. I'm sure. Should be a negative there. Um, like I said, here's where the magic happens. If you notice, I've got the same term on both sides. So what I'll do is I'll add 136 the integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx to this side. And then, of course, I have to add the same thing to this side. 136, the integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx. So I'm adding that to both sides of the equation. This is really cool. What's going to happen 
on the right hand side? Cancels, yeah. So we're left with, um, you know, I'm tired of writing it like this. Let me factor this stuff out. Well, no, nah, I'll, I'll just write it one more time, and then I'll factor it out. Um, this over here, cosine of 2x minus e to the negative x over 3 over 12 sine of 2x equals, now it's not really written, but what's understood to be here? In front of the integrand, what number? A one. So one, or in other words, 36 over 36, plus one over 36 gives me 37 over 36 times the integral of e to the negative x over three sine of two x. Oh. Almost done. Now what I want is I want a coefficient of one here. I don't want this crazy constant. I want to know what this equals exactly. Let me factor out the, uh, this term right here. That'd be negative e to the negative x over 3 over 2 times cosine of 2x plus um, 1 sixth sine of 2x. So to get rid of that coefficient, I can just multiply by the reciprocal on both sides. So we're going to multiply both sides by 36 over 37. And when I do that, I'll get the integral of e to the negative x over 3 sine of 2x dx equals... 36 over 37 times negative e to the negative x over 3 divided by 2 times is cosine of 2x plus 1 6 sine of 2x. And boy, would it be a real bummer to lose a point if you forgot the c there. There. Whew. Wow. Cool. So, so what happens is that you integrate by parts twice, and you should get something back that looks like your original integrand. And then you just have to add that to both sides and then solve. So it's a cute trick. It's clever. Hats off to whoever thought of that first. Not sure it would have been me. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of a cool trick. All right, that was a long one. Um, did you understand the general flow? Are you, are you okay with that one? Uh, if there's something about this one that you, you need a little help on, let me know. Uh, I, I limit myself to only eight or nine of them on an exam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's a good chance you'll see a, a, a solve for the integral one on the exam. But it'll only be one. <laughs> you know, I actually, if you look back at your your last exam, um, there's a couple problems that I debated making them worth more points, but I'm like, you know, I'll cut your break and I made them worth a little bit less. I think one of them was like a nine point problem. I was originally thinking of 11 or 12. So, but I knew it was a harder problem, so I'm like, you know, I'll cut them a break. Okay, uh, it's going to be your turn next for a couple problems. Uh, any last comments or thoughts on this one? See all the steps leading up to it. So how about maybe just kind of a recap? So, oh, you know what? Actually, we're not done. You know, I, I, I forgot. We're actually going to solve here. No, no. <laughs> Tell you, we, we can ignore this part if you really, really want. Um, what you would have to do is um, this would be your, your y equals this, and then just substitute in... Uh, yeah, 0 for x, which is going to make everything um, 1 except uh, the 1 half and this. Uh, yeah, you'll, it, it'd solve pretty quickly. Um, 
All right. Uh, let's see. Did, did you want to do that one or no? Yes. Yeah. All, right, all right. So this technically this is your y. So if we substitute in um, negative 18 over 37 for y, because this passes through the point 0 and negative 18 over 37, then I have to substitute in 0 for x. So it's going to be 36 over 37 times negative 1 half, because e to the 0 is going to be 1. Cosine of 0 is going to be 1 plus 1 sixth of 0 plus a constant. So these cancel, and guess what? Negative 1 18th or negative 18 over 37 equals negative 18 over 37 plus c. Let's get this out of here. What's that tell me that C has to equal? What is it? Zero. See, Lizzie, we did all that work for nothing. <laughs> in, in some sense. No, it was, it was good. I'm glad we finished that up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to kill the video here and then uh, give you a couple problems to work on. So, oh, yeah, I should give you some homework, too. Um, so let me do that. So for homework, try 11 through 35. You can skip 33. And then 39 through 53, you can skip uh, 47. Cool.